The Apple TV is one of the most advanced devices you could purchase for your television out there and available in the market. And there's a high chance that a lot of people aren't really using this device to its full potential because aside from being able to stream your favorite apps, services like HBO, Max, and such, this unit can do so much more. And so in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the features that not a lot of people know about that should allow you to actually use this device to its full potential so you really can get the most out of it. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, first thing first is a feature that I almost forgot all about. It's a feature that I know a lot of people are wild every time I mention this is that you can actually start a watch party via FaceTime. Apple calls this SharePlay and it's super easy to use. Only requirement there is is that everybody in this FaceTime call must be either on an iPhone or an iPad. And to get started, all you gotta do is just start a FaceTime call with your device, an iPhone or an iPad, send as many invites as you like. And once that FaceTime call is going, you gotta take your Siri remote, press and hold the little TV icon until you see that little menu pop up and go down and select share play. You confirmed it on your iPad or iPhone. And just make sure you select the movie or TV show that you wanna go ahead and share. And just like that, there you go. Now everybody's in sync and watching the same show or movie that you selected. It's pretty fun, it's free to use, so go ahead and get started by utilizing this unique feature. Now, the Siri controller has some unique features of its own, and some of the most important shortcuts that I found out that I use the most is basically this. This little arrow button, technically it's the back button, but if you actually long press, it'll actually take you from the main menu of your Apple TV. So it's a quick little shortcut to bypass going back and back and back until you get to this menu. Now, if you want to quickly access a previously open app, you can always activate App Switcher by double tapping the little TV icon on your Apple TV remote. This will enable App Switcher. You go back to a previously open app just like so. And also a swipe up will also allow you to actually close the app in case you're experiencing any troubleshoot problems. Now, if you do find this little track circle to be really sensitive for you, you're always able to adjust this. All you need to do is just go into your Apple TV settings, go where it says remote and devices, select track surface, tracking, and here is where you can actually go ahead and adjust the sensitivity. Now, Apple Arcade is really fun. And if you're subscribed to Apple Arcade, I will highly recommend connecting your Apple TV to a modern day gaming controller because the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X controller, including the Elite version and if you don't have those two, a Nintendo Switch controller is also compatible with the Apple TV. To set this up, all you really need to do is just go into settings, go down to remote and devices, go into Bluetooth, and on the very top portion, here's the guide and that'll walk you through how to connect those controllers wirelessly to the Apple TV. And it works extremely well, and this also helps in navigating the Apple TV as well. But in case you can't find your Apple TV remote, don't worry. The Apple TV remote is actually integrated on our iPhones as well as iPads and Apple Watch even. To have access to this, all you have to do on an iPhone is just bring out Control Center and look for this TV remote icon. So long as you're within the same Wi-Fi network as the Apple TV, you'll have full control right here. It's extremely easy to navigate and such. Now, if you don't see the Apple TV remote on your control center, it's really easy to enable it. All you need to do is just go into your iPhone settings, go in control center, and go ahead and look for it, add it, and there you go, it should be there. This works exactly the same way for the iPad as well. Now on the Apple Watch, all you gotta do is just simply launch either the Now Playing app or download the Apple TV remote on the Apple Watch. Select the Apple TV that you like to connect to, and bada beam, bada boom, you have full control of the Apple TV on your wrist. So once more, if you lose the controller, you have a hard time finding it, you can always just use those other substitutes. Now, one of the most amazing things about having an Apple TV in general is the capability to airdrop or airplay anything that you have on your other Apple devices that you'd like to stream on the big screen. Now, this is cool and all, but can sometimes become annoying because everybody has access to it. So I highly recommend changing the settings. To make your airplane experience more private, you just gotta go into your settings, go into airplane and home kit, and scroll down to allow access. Here's where you can adjust this setting, but what you like to do is require a one-time password. Just make sure this is enabled. Now, a one-time code is required for that device, but as soon as you enter that code once, now 
the device will remember that and will no longer ask you for a verification code. This way, whenever you have guests or somebody over your house, not everybody has access to your Apple TV unless you give them permission. Now, AirPlay not only allows you to stream whatever you're watching on your iPhone or an iPad, even on your laptop, but on your laptop, you have the capability to actually use your television for your Apple computer as an extended display. And as you see right here, it's extremely easy to do so and it works fairly well. So depending on your setup, you may find it easier having an Apple TV to be an extended display or mirror your display if you want to for presentations or just productivity. Now there's amazing ways to really personalize the Apple TV to your own personal preference. One of which is the capability to manually adjust light or dark mode. To go ahead and do this, all you gotta do is just go into your settings, go into general and select appearances and here's where you got to manually select light mode or dark mode. Now other great ways to personalize the Apple TVs, your own personal preference, is adjusting their favorite apps and moving them on top. So your most used apps typically is what you'll want to leave on the top row. And to do this, just simply hover over the app that you like and then keep holding it down until it enters wiggle mode. Here you have the freedom to move the apps and if you keep holding it, even while the app is in wiggle mode, you'll unlock this new additional option where if when you tap pause slash play, you'll have the capability to not only delete some of these third party apps as well as first parties, but also create custom folders so you can organize it that way if you like. Now, if you own two HomePod minis or even the regular size HomePods, so long as they're stereo and they're paired and listed to be in the same room as your Apple TV. You can find this on the official home app on your iPhone or even iPad. So long as these two speakers and the Apple TV is in the same room, if you actually go into your Apple TV settings and go into video and audio, select the audio output and you can select the home pods right here. Allow it to connect and there you go. Now the audio is actually coming out through the HomePod minis in our case. Now the perks of doing this is that majority of times, well, a lot of TV speakers, the HomePod sounds a lot better than the standard TV speakers that your TV comes equipped with. So if you don't have like a sound bar or something like that, you may find it better just using the HomePods to be the speaker audio source for your television. That's how you go ahead and do that. And this also beats some budget sound bars as well because in my personal experience, the HomePod minis, don't, they don't sound that bad. They actually sound really good, especially when you're viewing cinematic movies. I especially love doing this, especially when I'm using AirPlay to stream whatever music that I'm playing on my iPhone to the television. It just utilizes the HomePods and synchronizes them pretty well. Now, picture in picture is another feature that the Apple TV does indeed have. I find it easier to enable this whenever I'm watching something on my iPhone and just AirPlay to the Apple TV. When this menu pops up, Grab your Siri remote and just tap on the little lower right hand corner. Select this little icon. This will actually put that video into picture in picture and you can play like a movie or something in the background. So you can actually watch two things at once. This is ideal for primarily for sports and you have little ones that just want to watch a movie as well. You could do this. So you can still keep an eye out on your game. Now, if you use the Apple TV plus app a lot, you may find the top portion right here kind of annoying because by default, it will just suggest you random stuff. If you'd like to actually change this to your own personal preference, something more personal, like the what's next feature, it's really easy to do so. Just go into your settings and go in, go into the app section and then select TV and where it says home screen, where it says top shelf, change it to up next. And now just quickly go ahead and go back into your Apple TV and just go ahead and manually select something you personally wanna watch next long press and just go ahead and select add to up next and now you're going to have your top row personalized to you and if you like to remove them you can repeat the process this is somewhat like what youtube has when you save for later aside from that there you guys have it i am going to go more into depth in a separate video more about tuning the picture quality to your own personal preference. This is gonna be a much longer video, much more detailed video due to the fact there's, there's so many TVs out there, some that support Adobe Atmos, and then Apple has an excellent substitute for the TVs that don't support Adobe Atmos. So for the best Apple TV settings for your television, I highly recommend subscribing 
until that video is done and published, which should be in a couple of days. So if you like, stay tuned for that video. Highly recommend subscribing and hitting the like button, showing me that you do want to go ahead and watch that video. There you guys have it. Those are some amazing hidden features that the Apple TV can offer that a lot of people seem to forget or may not even know that the Apple TV was capable of achieving such interesting features. So if you got some good useful information out of this video, again, greatly appreciate it. If you can actually leave this video a like and make sure you are subscribed for the next part two video of the best settings to adjust for your Apple TV for the best picture quality. Aside from that, if you wish to watch more, feel free to check out this video over here where I recently review the Apple TV and give you my general overall thoughts about it. And then that video over there, that is a video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.